Hey, what's going on, Noel? Oh, it's all right. We're here, 13th and Locust. Yeah, we're here at 13th and Locust. And I just wanted a few updates. Um, how is my grandfather doing uh, post uh, surgery? My grandfather had surgery in March for a double bypass. And before that, his health condition was very serious, that he has psoriasis and cirrhosis all over his body and deep um, scar tissue from that experience plus the hepatitis C that he recovered from. So Mumia has a variety of conditions, but the double bypass congestive heart failure was the most immediate. And people are very much mobilizing right now to get Mumia the rehabilitation care that he needs. He was checked out of the hospital with no rehabilitation plan, no cardiac diet, and was given the simple instruction for 100 days, don't lift a book more than 15 pounds. Wow. That is not what people need to recover. It's not enough. He was also in solitary, and that meant that he couldn't exercise. He couldn't do what he needed to do to take care of himself. So the world, I think, has their eyes right on the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections and is trying to move that. Right. Sounds, sounds uh, like we got a lot of work to do. Um, when we talk about um, Umi Abu Jamal and the, the status of his cases, both medical and uh, legal, like what, what's the status of his cases? So his medical case is ongoing, and that was from when they almost killed him, when he went into renal failure, when they didn't treat his hepatitis C. He was treated with a fast-acting antivirals, and he was able to be cured of hep C. But now we're running into a situation where we have to absolutely monitor his care. He has some conditions that put him at great risk for further congestive heart failure. And so the prison is not the ideal place for someone to recover anyone, especially yeah. someone who's older. And so Mumia needs his freedom. Mumia has spent freedom. nearly 40 years in prison. Yeah. I agree. Do you have any questions for me? You know, I was gonna tell people also that his legal case is in a dramatic moment. It's stuck right now in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, but he has new evidence that was found by the district attorney and released to his defense team. That new evidence will trigger a new evidentiary hearing and could trigger a new trial. So Mumia has all the opportunity to get relief in the courts in Philadelphia right now. I agree. I interviewed Maureen Faulkner, mm -hmm. the victim's wife and she said their goal they don't think they can keep mumia in prison they think mumia is going to get out but they want to keep him in as long as possible so that he passes away in prison and we can't let that happen because really justice in philadelphia it matters so tell me why does your grandfather's case your pop pop's case make a difference in philadelphia why is it transformative well, I think of uh, Mumia Abu Jamal's case um, being more of a, a catalyst of a continued injustice in Philadelphia when it comes to legal systems and prison uh, industrial complex. Um, Mumia's freedom is essential, right? We can't run around uh, talking about Black Lives Matter and believe uh, Black, Black Lives Matter without thinking about or supporting the freedom of Mumia Abu Jamal. Mumia Abu Jamal is one of the most famous political prisoners in the world. And the reason he's one of the most famous political prisoners in the world is because his case is his imprisonment is extremely unjust. How do you see him? Like, what do you see in your grandfather? Well, I, I, see, I see a scholar, um, a jokester, because he likes to tell jokes and riddles and such. Um, but I also see um, a guy who it's unwavering loyal to black liberation. It's a liberation of all people, right? And we, we talk about, you know, like how uh, all liberation comes through black liberation. But like my grandfather is, uh, he's solid. You know, it's 100% focused on um, the freedoms of everyone as well as the freedoms of his own. How do you think that Philadelphia would deal with Mumia Abu-Jamal getting a new trial? How do I believe that they will deal with it? Yeah. Uh, I believe that they're going to, uh, you know, try, try to do their best to cover their ass, you know, to be honest. Uh, but again, like you said, uh, with new evidence, right, with, uh, with a, a DA who, uh, who everyone believes will do his best to, you know, do, do, do what he has to do. I think that Mumia has his best shot, you know, or actually his only shot, you know, in 40 years to get freedom. 
There's no shot in uh, the, the 1980s, no shot in the uh, 90s, no shot in the double O's because of the, uh, the racism that circles the, the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections and prison industrial complex. But what we're trying to do, what we're really focused on is understanding that Mumia needs a fair trial. And this would be his only fair trial that he's ever had. You know, we're both in Philadelphia. Yeah. And we're standing right here where it happened. What do you think's the risk for the society to realize that Mumia did not get a fair trial? That the corruption that Rizzo, Rendell, and Albert Sabo created, that that level of toxic corruption, why is that impenetrable? Why can't we have it? Well, it, a lot of it has to do with denial, right? Denial that these these systems were even in place. The denial. Um, a well, we lot see of it in the paper denial. every yeah. day. Like yeah. if we read the papers in Philadelphia, there's like sex, lies, and police detectives, yeah. corruption. Yeah. There's like they're exonerating people every single yes. week. Yeah. They're taking down dozens of cops. Yeah. Like you're here in city watching them just go after the corruption, but then they stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they, they, they stop they, like this close to it's, Mumia. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of denial, and it's also um, a lot of individuals. Um, not understanding how um, how simple his case is, right? They they talk about like complexities of a case, but it's very very simple. Um, Umi is a free should be a free man today. If uh, if when he was incarcerated, uh, they gave him a fair trial, which they did not. Uh, we we are we're in this great time uh, where individuals are. They're, they're basically seeing the bed bugs, right? They're, take, they're, they're uncovering all of these uh, corruptions where we need to um, not shun away like from the case of Mumia Abu-Jamal because like I said, his case is the catalyst of all of these cases that individuals are becoming like free today. The mainstream media and the world at large will never let us know that we're close mm -hmm. and they fight way harder when you're about to win. Yeah. And so this moment where we can make a difference like anybody's action can make a difference um talk about like why right now people should step up right now people should step up um simply because uh we're in the spotlight right people are listening there was a time where people uh didn't care you know about a, a fallen uh, black panther party member in the prison um systems right but now when after we are watching hollywood films and we're watching uh, these these great uh, papers like come out and talk about like the corruption when it came to uh, you know black liberation uh, movement members. Bumia is not exempt of that. Like th this this is straight up corruption, and he should be free today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.